Hey guys, welcome back to the Toys for Life shop. If you've ever considered buying a set of headers for your C5 Corvette, then this video is for you. We're going to talk about long tubes, shorties, under hood temperatures, and a whole lot more based upon solid facts with no marketing hype. Next. Toys for Life. Headers, 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 and more headers. What exactly are headers and why are they so popular? Headers are a replacement for the factory exhaust manifolds that are typically, but not always, cast iron from the factory. Later year C5 exhaust manifolds are cast iron and look like these. Headers gained immense popularity by hot rodders back in the 60s through the 70s. Back then, most manufacturers cast iron manifolds were poorly designed, with the majority of attention given to keep production costs low and to make sure the manifolds fit within the available space under the hood, resulting in some pretty anemic horsepower numbers. It's no wonder throwing a set of headers on anything 70s resulted in big power gains. Lucky for us, by the mid-90s, GM blessed the Corvette with some extremely free-flowing exhaust manifolds. Don't believe me? Take a look at this. There's really no comparison. So guys, the whole point in walking through that little history lesson was simply to shed a little bit of light on how the legend of headers producing incredible gains originated. So now we know that modern LS1 exhaust manifolds are quite efficient, but what we really wanna know is, what kind of horsepower gains should we expect when swapping in a set of long tube headers? For the answer to that question, let's check out some dyno test Results. Back in 2010, BBK installed their long tubes on a modified C5, and the horsepower increased from 365 to 390 at the rear tires. However, in this test, they also included their catted X pipe and their cat back exhaust. In 2008, Super Chevy magazine tested a set of Texas Speed's long tube headers which included their three inch off-road X-pipe as well, and I believe a regular two and a half inch cat back. For their efforts, Super Chevy Magazine got 28 rear wheel horsepower, and if you go to Texas Speed's website, they make a claim of 20 to 25 rear wheel horsepower. To illustrate just how efficient late model LS cast iron manifolds can be, Super Chevy Magazine took a modified 427 LSX motor and ran it with cast iron manifolds for 661 horsepower. Then they swapped in long tubes and got 681 horsepower. Only a 20 horsepower gain. That absolutely speaks to how efficient late model cast iron exhaust manifolds have become. So guys, based on that information, I think we can safely conclude if you upgrade your three to 400 horsepower C5 Corvette to long tube headers, you're probably gonna gain somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 rear wheel horsepower. A little bit more if you go with an off-road X-pipe, a little bit less if you keep your factory catalytic converters. So are there any downsides to upgrading to long tube headers? There's a couple things to look out for. Number one, some fit better than others, and some hang lower to the ground than others. You're gonna to wanna to do some research on Corvette Forum or other automotive forums that talk about Corvette headers. Number two, they can be expensive. On the low end, you know, somewhere around 600 bucks. On the high end, for a good set of cooks, you're looking at closer to $1,500 to $1,800. If it's a daily driven Corvette, I've got concerns about underhood heat. Take a look at this. Headers get hot. Maybe not always red hot, but they do get hot. The whole idea of radiating heat has to do with high temperature and lots of surface area. After all, look at how my shop heater is constructed. Look familiar? Now there's going to be a lot of people that say headers are coated, they don't create that much heat, but if you look at the long tube header versus the cast iron exhaust manifold, it's pretty obvious which one's going to generate the most heat. That's definitely something you're going to want to keep in mind if you daily drive your C5. Now there is one subjective benefit to long tube headers that you just can't deny. When combined with the right lumpy cam, they sound amazing. Guys, we've got one more area to cover, but before we do so, if you found this video to be informational, 
If you could do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button down below, I'd greatly appreciate it. Now, let's move on to shorty headers. I've searched high and low trying to find any documentation or dyno tests that they add horsepower and I couldn't find any. And I think that's because if you look at their tubular design, their short tubular design, versus the tubular cast iron LS manifolds, they're very similar. So in my mind, the only reason a guy would want to swap out to shorty headers for the LS1 would be if you want that hot rod look without all of the potential heat that a long tube header might generate. Guys, that does it for this video. Please remember to share, like, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.